Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a red-green pummeler deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. It's an energy aggro deck capable of a combo finish thanks to electrostatic pummeler, a 3-mana 1-1 artifact creature construct that when it enters the battlefield it generates 3 energy and we can pay 3 energy at any time and then the pummeler gets plus x plus x until end of turn where x is its power so the game plan is to eventually play a couple pump spells on the pummeler before using its ability to double its power and we've got plenty of other energy generating cards to potentially use the ability more than once which can lead to a ton of damage out of nowhere so let's take a look at all the energy cards in the deck you can use this shortcut to look at all the energy cards and at one mana we've got the full place of a tune with ether a sorcery that lets us search for a basic land to put into our hand and then we get to add two energy as well at two mana we've got an assortment of creatures including voltaic brawler a three two that generates two energy upon entering the battlefield and when the brawler attacks we can spend one energy to give it plus one plus one and trample until end of turn so the deck is definitely capable of winning games with some of these creatures without having to draw electrostatic pummeler then we also have the full place of Servant of the Conduit, a 2-2 that generates 2 energy, and we can tap it and spend 1 energy to add 1 mana of any color, so this can help us ramp. And then a Long Tusk Cub, a 2 mana 2-2 that generates 2 energy when it deals combat damage to a player, and we can pay 2 energy to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it. So getting a Long Tusk Cub in play early and kind of snowballing that energy advantage is also a big part of this deck's game plan. And then we have Harness Lightning, a 2 mana instant that can be used as removal since we get to choose target creature. We get 3 energy and then we can pay any amount of energy including energy we already had and then it deals that much damage to that creature. But we can also decide to play Harness Lightning without dealing any damage. Let's say we're playing against a creatureless opponent, then we can still cast a Harness Lightning targeting our own creature because we do need a target in play before we can cast it. And then we can deal 0 damage and just get the 3 energy which we can spend elsewhere, maybe pumping or electrostatic pump which is a card that can lead to some crazy wins that other cards never could and then we also sometimes want to play the pummeler and have one mana backup to potentially cast blossoming defense to protect it as this can give plus two plus two and hexproof so if we're expecting lots of removal from the opponent we might want to slow play it and make sure we can protect our key creature and then at 4 mana we've got Bristling Hydra, a 4-3 that when it enters the battlefield it generates 3 energy, and we can spend 3 energy to put a plus 1 plus 1 counter on the Hydra, and it also gains Hexproof until end of turn, so it's got that built-in protection, which also makes it a great recipient of our various pump spells, which we'll get to in a second. And then in the mana base we also have 4 copies of Ether Hub, which generates 1 energy when it enters the battlefield, it taps for colorless mana, or we can tap it, pay 1 energy, and then make 1 mana of any color. So for the most part we want to try and preserve that energy, to spend it on our creatures but every now and then we can still use the energy from ether hub to fix our mana and then speaking of pump spells there's no shortage of those in the deck at one mana we've already discussed blossoming defense a key part of protecting our electrostatic pummeler and then we've got two pump spells that both give four additional power as well as trample because of course the pummeler doesn't have built-in trample so the opponent could just chum block it and force us to spend a bunch of energy to save the pummeler so instead we want to give it plus four additional power and trample until end of turn with invigorated rampage can also have the flexibility of giving two creatures plus two power and trample until end of turn instead and the trample can also come in handy when it comes to cards like long tusk cub which needs to connect with the opponent to gain two energy and then we also have collision colossus which has the flexibility of the collision half dealing six damage to a creature with flying and then colossus for red and green gives plus four plus two and trample until end of turn so a single pump spell that gives plus four power and trample and six energy represents 20 damage with electrostatic pummeler then going over the mana base, we've got 4 copies of Attune with Ether, which is why we only have 20 lands in the deck. And then besides our 4 copies of Ether Hub, we've got 2 Mountains, 4 Forests, 4 of the Red Green Pathway, 2 Rootbound Crag, and 4 copies of Stomping Ground. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. This hand's got a lot of pump spells, but we don't have many creatures to go with those. And Servant's probably the weakest creature by itself, so I think this... Has to be a mulligan. This hand's much better. And it's actually tricky to decide what to put on the bottom. I think I keep Servant because the 2 energy plus 1 from Ether Hub is enough to give us an extra Pummeler activation. So I might get rid of one of the pump spells. And I might be getting rid of Collision Colossus just because 
The Rampage is a little easier to cast since it has a generic mana requirement. Alright, so tap Stomping Ground, turn 2 Servant, turn 3 Pummeler, probably turn 4 Pummeler, and then maybe turn 5 go for the kill. Opponent on a mono blue mill deck, it looks like. So as long as one of the pummelers resolves, we should be okay. Cacophony mills for eight. So we're down to 34 cards. Ooh, Blossoming Defense is perfect. So now I can play Pummeler and keep up my Blossoming Defense, just in case. And then next turn, we can play Defense if my point stepped out, play Rampage, so that's already a 7-powered Pummeler, and then we can double twice, so 14, 28. But I guess my opponent has 10 Toughness here. So it's not quite lethal. So I might have to play another Pummeler first. 25 cards on Library, I think we can afford to wait. Uh, let's see, does Aetherhub give me enough energy? If I play Aetherhub, play Servants, then I go up to 9 energy. But I'll need to spend 1 energy in order to cast both Rampage and Defense. So it's still a little bit short. Of course, this is assuming my opponent would triple block the Pummeler, which I think they would. So let's just play another Pummeler. And then keep up Blossoming Defense. And then next turn we should easily get there, as long as my opponent doesn't have Interaction. But even with Interaction, I can just Rampage and then keep Defense in hand, as opposed to playing the Defense first. And bristling Hydra, so I guess playing Servant of the Conduit first gives me an extra activation. And now by attacking with both Pummelers, they won't be able to triple block both, so one of them will have an easier time connecting. So we'll just... Pump the one that has the one Secret Keeper in front of it. Resolves. Double. Double. And double. Alright, sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with pretty nice looking hands. Could use one more pump spell, but we've got double pummeler to make energy. Hydra can make energy too, and then a blossoming defense to protect pummeler and maybe give it plus two plus two. Can play a tapped rootbound crag on turn one. So yeah, we're just. Collision Colossus or Invigorated Rampage away from a lot of damage and Long Tusk Cub was also an awesome draw. So turn one Gilded Goose, Mountain. And Fire Prophecy to kill the Cub. So this could be kind of the Neoform combo deck. Trying to combo off with Seagate Stormcaller. Or maybe not. Could also be an Aetherworks Marvel deck, I suppose. Yeah, I guess we'll just play Pummeler for now. Just more mana efficient. And if they kill it, we have a backup. I'll be a bit more careful with the second copy as opposed to the first one. In case they do have more removal here. Now 
All right, opponent's gonna pass with three mana. Harness Lightning could take out the Gilded Goose as well. So, probably just gonna play a tune, get a land. And then I could Harness Lightning the Gilded Goose. I'll have one leftover energy from this interaction, which goes up to six, which is still enough for two activations. All right, opponent's gonna Harness Lightning, Pummeler in response. Yeah, we'll just protect it here. And then opponent doesn't get any energy and we'll pay two. So if I were to pump twice, goes up to 6, goes up to 12. So it's far from lethal. But we would be making use of that uh, Blossoming Defense while we can. So it's definitely an interesting decision here whether or not we go all in. I think I'm just going to hit for 3. And then save my energy for until we can find Invigorated Rampage or... Collision Colossus, opponent is indeed playing a Marvel deck. More Pummelers, but we can just play Hydra for now. So now if I were to find Blossoming Defense, I might go for the Triple pump on Pummeler. Second Marvel just to make two energy, since Marvel sees itself go to the graveyard. And Fable Passage going to the graveyard, so one more energy. So it points up to five, so there's still one energy short of spinning the wheel. Alright, so if I were to activate Pummeler three times, goes up to two, goes up to four, goes up to eight. So that's 12 damage total, so that's not lethal yet. If I play another Pummeler first, we should have it. So even without a pump spell, if we have enough energy, we can still get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? No Pummeler, but we do have turn 2 Brawler, a couple Pump Spells, Hydra at 4. Pretty far from casting those two Hydras. This hand might be better on the draw, where we're more likely to hit our land drops. I think this is a mulligan. Eh, this is much better. So I'll keep a tune. I can maybe get rid of a land since we have a tune and three lands here. And then uh it doesn't matter too much. And we'll fetch up forests. And then we've got turn two brawler, turn three pummeler, and then we'll see if we draw a land for Hydra or maybe a pump spell to go with the pummeler. Ooh, Long Tusk Cub is a nice one too. So play the Cub first, and if that survives it can generate more energy. This is a deck that often doesn't spend energy on the Cub if it has access to Pummeler in hand. So it just kind of serves as a way to produce energy. So let's get in there. And then the question is, do we want to play Electrostatic Pummeler with no Blossoming Defense to protect it? And I think the answer might be yes, because we have Hydra as a follow-up, and then if they kill Pummeler, we can just sink our mana into Hydra, which can be a fine win condition against maybe a Blue-Red Wizard deck, which 
has access to a lot of removal. So given that we don't have any pump spells to go with the pummeler, it can just act as a distraction that still generates three energy. So that's kind of the powerful thing about all these energy creatures that generate energy when they enter the battlefield, even if the opponent kills them, they still generate an advantage. So I expect a pummeler to die, or at least my point to keep up instant speed removal. So the Long Tusk Cub isn't guaranteed to attack past the Soulscar Mage successfully. If they have two one mana instants, this could grow up to a 3-4. So we'd have to pump Cub twice, and a burn spell could also shrink down the Cub thanks to the Mage's ability. So instead I'll just play Hydra. Hydra resolves. We've got 10 energy. Alright, now with 10 energy, I probably can afford to attack with the cub. And we'll see what happens. Alright, Wizard's Lightning. I don't think I fight over this. It would represent 3 minus 1 minus 1 counters with the Soul Scar Mage. So it's not really worth investing all the energy to save it. But Hydra, on the other hand, is a safer investment. So our opponent did have the two instants I was afraid of. And Dreadhorde Arcanist can flash back the opt, the wizard slining still has converted mana cost 3 in the graveyard. So that one doesn't work. So I might have to keep the Hydra on defense just to discourage Arcanist attacking. A card I would really like to draw, I guess, is Blossoming Defense to protect Electrostatic Pummeler. Alright, opponent taps out. So they would be at the mercy of a top-decked pump spell here. Sadly, we did not find one. Otherwise, Pummeler could have easily won the game. So do I attack with Bristling Hydra? Kind of feels like a mistake to do so. We'll just play Servants and Brawler. And then the Hydra can potentially eat an attacking Arcanist. So, opponent knows that we didn't have the pump spell to go for lethal, so they might ignore Pummeler now. But they're just gonna keep up 5 mana, so they could still have all sorts of instants. Now, Voltaic Brawler could attack. Goes up to a 4 3. Opponent's not super likely to have three instants here to pump Soulscar Mage. But if they have a burn spell to kill the Brawler, I'm just gonna have to let it go since it's gonna be minus one, minus one counters again. That opponent's gonna shock it in response, so then I'll save myself the one energy. Play another Brawler. And then I might as well thin out the deck, so we're more likely to find some action. Still gonna keep Hydra on defense. Shock in the graveyard is kind of scary with Arcanist, so all the more reason to keep the Hydra back. Augur Bolas It's also a wizard. So another wizard payoff we can expect is Adelis, the Cinder Wind, giving wizards plus one plus one whenever they cast an instant or sorcery. Alright, so there's not a whole lot going on. Brawler can attack, they're gonna shock it again. It's probably the end of the story. So 
So I want to find Invigorated Rampage, Collision Colossus, and maybe a Blossoming Defense if the plan is still to win with uh, Pummeler. 18 energy also represents a lot of plus one counters for Hydra, so just finding a second Hydra so we can attack with one of them, play defense with the other one could also be reasonable here. So I've got a bit of a staring contest. Our draws haven't been great. third Arcanists. And yeah, they do have quite a few one mana instants to get back. So I'm sure they're just waiting to attack with those, but the Hydra is doing a good job on defense. All right, there's Invigorated Rampage. So if I knew for a fact that my opponent didn't have any removal in hand, I could try and go for the win with Pummeler. But a simple Shock or Wizard's Lightning could mess with that plan. So I think I gotta wait until I find a Blossoming Defense to go for Lethal here. Now, of course, I could pump the Pummeler in response to Shock or Wizard Lightning, but then I would be spending all my energy before it gets for additional power. So that would be an incredible waste of uh, resources. So for now, it's just a staring contest. Collision Colossus, all right, so now we have two pump spells to go with the Pummeler. One of them also pumps Toughness. I think I'm going to go for it here. We'll see what happens. Don't really expect any bound spells, it's mostly burn spells we need to play around. All right, that resolves. So we'll attack. Opponent goes to blocks. And then with 18 energy, I've got six activations. So that should pretty much be game unless they've got a bounce spell. Ah, they're gonna attempt to shock. I'll activate our response. We'll activate again. And again, and then the shock resolves and gives minus two, minus two. Still a very lethal pummeler. And my opponent explodes. So yeah, the fact that pummeler also pumps toughness when using the ability is pretty key when facing burn spells. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with an acceptable hand. Turn two, maybe play the Long Tusk Cub, generate some energy, and eventually we'll have Pummeler plus Colossus to maybe end the game. Turn one planes into a Janice Welcome, so a life gain deck. Turn two, a Janice Pride Mates. Yeah, it might benefit me to just harness lining the Pride Mates before it picks up more counters. Because the Pride Mates just gonna outgrow the Long Tusk Cub. So let's do that now. Now the bright side here, the Life Gain deck typically doesn't have much removal. So the Pummeler plus Pump Spell could work out quite well for us. And we've got a decent amount of energy going here. Sarah Sandon turns into a scary card at 30 life. All right, back up Pride Mates. Already a 4-4. Four, four. 
and our points at 27. Could also use Collision to kill the Saracendants if it turns into a Flyer. And another Electrostatic Pummeler, interesting. So, yeah, I think we'll play Pummeler this turn. Don't really have any good attacks with uh, Long Tusk Cub. Uh, if I play Servant first, it gets a counter, so it kind of cancels out the two energy. So I think I'm on the Pummeler plan now. So I'll play Pummeler. And pass a turn. And then we might see a giant Saracendant, and then we'll have to decide if we need to kill it, or if we save Colossus to go with Pummeler. Angel Vitality is going to put them to above 30 now. So yeah, that's a lot of damage coming our way. And a lot of life gain as well. Let's take it for now. Rampage. So, can only double with Pummeler once. If I play Servant first, I could double twice. Doubling is slightly better than playing another pump spell here. We can get to 20, but uh, that's one doubling short. And next turn, I'm gonna have to deal with a flyer and chump. So I guess what we can do is play Servants and then use Colossus to kill Saracendants, Chump, and then next turn try and go for lethal. Another Angel Vitality, yep. So I could also decide to kill Angel Vitality, but Saracendon gaining the opponent 6 life, or in this case 8 life, is probably a bigger deal. Alright, so we'll collision. Killing Ascendants. And then we'll jump with a Cub, I guess. Another Pummeler doesn't really help. So I could play Pummeler, get three energy. But then I'll have to spend one energy to play my Rampage. If I had drawn a land, I could have played Pummeler and Rampage, go up to 9 energy, 5 power Pummeler, activate 3 times, so would go to 10, 20, 40. So we still would have been short of uh, 47 here. So yeah, that's too bad, and we're gonna be dead to the Flyers next turn. So not much I can do. Opponent takes it, but sadly we don't have enough. A mere 20 damage. Alright, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and this hand's okay, except for the fact that it's missing a key creature. Don't have a Long Tusk Cub, no Pummeler, no Hydra, so don't really have much to go with the Servant here. But if we draw one of those within the first couple draw steps, this hand's actually pretty strong. So maybe it's still worth keeping. And then pretty much any creature besides another Servant would be a great draw.
Temple of Deceit. Let's Christ to the top. Alright, there's a brawler. Could have also decided to wait on the brawler to keep a blossoming defense. Another temple, scry to the top, and we might see Fatal Push or Blood Chief's Thirst to kill Brawler. I suppose I could wait on a tune and just keep a Blossoming Defense to save the Servant in case of more spot removal. Servant isn't vital to our game plan, but if I don't have any creatures, then I also don't have any pressure. So I think I will keep a Blossoming Defense here. And then I'm not sure if I'm casting it yet, if they try to kill Servant. But at least I'll have the option. Alright, there's an Uro. So a Pummeler would be a great draw. Another Blossoming Defense instead. Their opponent missed on a land last turn, they drew one for now. And a Hedron Archives, their opponent's going big. Still nothing. So at most I can give 8 additional power here, which is still a lot uh, shy of lethal. Arnon Great Crater. Technically also stops Pummeler from being activated, but we can just take him out. I will not stop. Gets a Graph Digger's Cage. Maybe your opponent is expecting us to be playing a Marvel deck. As it turns out, we're a Pummeler deck. And we're about to Pummel Karn here. Probably okay using a Blossoming Defense and save my Collision Colossus. I will so the cage does nothing against us. But as long as we are missing a creature here, we're not doing much either. Lithoform Engine. Okay. And a grow spiral. Alright, bristling hydra will do. So I could put my point to three, but we're just gonna try and set up a lethal for next turn. So with cage in play they can't even escape their own Uro now. Not that they had enough cards in graveyard to begin with. Explorer could be copied by a Lithoform engine, maybe. But our opponent doesn't. Shocks themselves down to 11. And just plays an Uro. And they can copy the trigger with a Lithoform engine. Sure. So Rapun goes back up to 17. But we should be able to deal 17 damage here. So, tank with all. And one more. Alright, so a bit of an unconventional game here against some sort of Sultai Lithoform Engine ramp deck. And yeah, our opponent spending an entire turn getting a Graph Digger Skage, thinking we're an Aetherworks Marvel deck. Definitely play to our advantage here. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. So if this is a Spirit Dancer deck, we've got Harness Lightning. If this is kind of the Rakdos Pyromancer deck, the sound's going to be a little weak, but I think we still keep... Don't have the Pummeler for the combo finish, which is going to be a bit more reliable against the Aura deck as opposed to the Black Red deck, which has access to more interaction. Bristling Hydra would be a great card to draw against the Rakdos deck, but looks like our opponent's on Auras instead. So, yeah, in this case we just want to draw Electrostatic Pummeler more than anything else. No turn to play. So maybe they've got the Auras, but they're missing the creatures. Who knows, or they wanted to play Spirit Dancer and play an Aura in the same turn. Which could have been a reason to just pass with Harness lining up. Yeah, opponent just puts Lurus in hand, so pretty slow start on their side. I think I'm just going to hit for three and preserve my energy. So they don't have triple whites, so if they play Lurus they can only play a blue enchantment. So they're gonna pass, and we're just gonna harness lightning. And I guess I don't mind using a bit of energy now. And we'll pump up our two creatures. And then next turn we can attack and double Colossus for the win, maybe. Ah, there's a Spirit Dancer at long last. Can they give a lifelink? All that glitters, that's fine. And that's it. So this wasn't necessarily the energy deck being powerful, but more the aura deck not really working as intended. So... Pump there, and we'll pump here. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw with a keepable, if maybe unexciting hand. No pummeler, but can always have pummeler in our hand. And then we get to start with Pathway, a tune for Mountain. Opponent on Merfolk, perhaps. So gotta save the harness lining for a lord. If they are indeed playing Merfolk. So against other creature decks that don't have much removal. Our primary game plan is typically to win with Pummeler, but of course if we don't draw it, that becomes a bit more challenging. And our turn to River Sneak. So for now I'm just going to play Voltaic Brawler. Another Harness Lining could definitely come in handy. So we can kill any scary merfolk they play. Biomancer and Sneak are still okay. And then we can start hitting for 4 per turn. And hopefully outrace the merfolk. Merfolk Mistbinder. And they still have 1 mana. So who knows, maybe they have a Blossoming Defense or Spell Pierce. Ooh, there's a Pummeler. All right, change of plan. Just gonna play Pummeler. And then I might be able to just combo kill my opponent next turn. I've got eight energy, so we can double twice. If I draw lands, I can play two pump spells. And that should easily be enough. Kumena shows up. So 
So they could decide to draw a card by tapping three Merfolk. So maybe only the sneak attacks here. Nope, the Biomancer gets in there too. So I don't mind trading Brawler for Biomancer now that we have a Pummeler in play. Alright, never mind, the Biomancer are gonna stay home. Take three. Alright, and there's a lane, so that should do it. So I also have the option of just casting Colossus and then pumping three times with the Pummeler's ability. So we would go up to five, then 10, 20, 40. So I think 40 damage is enough here. Opponents tapped out. They can't pay for a Pact of Negation. So I think we're good. Colossus. And let's see for opponent, let's just go through the motions. Alright, 40 damage. Easy peasy. So yeah, without Pummeler, this probably would have been a pretty difficult matchup. But against decks with a low number of interactive spells, Pummeler is usually our best avenue to victory. So yeah, the red-green Pummeler, pretty fun deck. It used to be quite budget-friendly back in paper, but of course Arena works a little bit differently, so it is going to cost you quite a few wild cards to build it. So I don't necessarily recommend it as a competitive deck, but it is a lot of fun. And if you happen to play a lot of Kaladesh Limited, you might just pick up a lot of the cards you need anyway. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.